Uh, good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazar, and today is 20th April 2021. The day is Tuesday. Right now, I am with the 11th Cambridge class, and the subject we are studying is Physics 5054. Today, we have set our hearts to solve uh, MCQ paper. So, we have selected May, June 2010, 1 1 paper. This paper belongs from the zone one. So, let's start today's paper and Let's move to the next uh, questions. Okay, so here we have May, June 2010, one one paper. So the question number one is showing up on your screen. So here we go. Let me increase the size. Okay, so you can see. Okay, so we have this question. Uh, power is measured in watts. What is the correct symbol for Millions of what? Millions. Uh, don't confuse it with milli. Milli is something different. Milli means one by thousand. Millions mean 10 raised to power six. It is represented with the capital M. And the watt is also represented with the capital M. So uh, I can say D is the choice. Question number one, D is the right choice. Next question coming on your screen. The following statements are about motion. A plane flies due east for 600 kilometers. A runner's average speed in a race around track is five meter per second. A snail crawls at three millimeter per second in a straight line towards a lattice. A tourist travels 500 kilometers on a journey. Which statement describes vector quantity? Vector quantities are those quantities in which we have a certain direction. So certain direction is here and here. So one and three are the, are the statements in which you have the direction also. So I think B is the choice. Question number two, B is the right choice. They are vector quantities. <clears throat> a student measures the speed of a trolley at one instant the speed of the trolley is one meter per second and the two seconds later the speed is four meter per second what is the acceleration of the trolley you see uh, the initial acceler initial velocity is given that's one meter per second the final velocity is given that's four meter per second the time is given that's two seconds and he wants you to find out the acceleration. So we will use the formula. Acceleration is equal to V minus U divided by T. That's the definition of the acceleration. Change in velocity divided by time. So let me show you my work. So here we go. So question number one. A equals to V minus U divided by T. A equals to four minus one divided by two. So that will be three by two. That will be 1.5 meter per second meter per second square 1.5 meter per second square so the choice what's the choice the choice is a question number three a is the choice The speed time graph shows the movement of a car. It's a speed time graph. On the y-axis, the speed is represented. On the x-axis, the time is represented. The slope of this graph represents the acceleration or deceleration. And the area under the graph represents the distance traveled. What does the shaded area of the graph represent? The shaded area of the graph represents the distance traveled by the car. So I think C is the right choice. The total distance traveled by the car, without any doubt, C is the right answer.
Two men jump out of an aeroplane at the same time. One of the men opens his parachute and the other men remain in free fall. Why is the man in free fall moving faster than the parachutist? You see the man in the free fall, he, his surface area is smaller, so he's getting less air resistance. Whereas the man in the parachute, he has opened his parachute, so his surface area has become larger. So he is obviously getting more air resistance. So that's why uh, the parachutist is getting more air resistance and the, and the man in the free fall is getting less air resistance. Why is the man in the free fall moving faster than the parachutist? The parachutist experiences greater, greater air resistance. That is the right choice. A choice is the man in the free fall experiences greater air resistance. That's wrong. A man in the free fall has a greater mass. No. C is the right choice. The parachutist has not reached arm level of. That is also wrong. So question number five, C is the right choice. <clears throat> the diagram shows an aeroplane turning in a horizontal circle at constant speed. In which direction is there a resultant force? You see it's turning in a, in a, in a circle. So when it's turning in a circle, the direction of the resultant force should be towards the center of that circle. So by the leaning of the of the of this aeroplane, you can understand that the circles where is the center of the circle. So I think D is the best option. Question number six, D is the best option, sir. The resultant force should be directed towards the center of the circle. A passenger is sitting in an aeroplane which takes off and climbs to a thousand, ten thousand meter. <clears throat> this during this time, what happens to the mass and to the weight of the passenger? You see, the mass will not change. The mass does not depend upon the your location. So the mass will remain unchanged, but as he is gaining height, he is going up. So he is going away from the center of the earth. So the g value will decrease. So the weight will decrease. So the mass should remain unchanged and the weight should decrease. So question number seven, C is the choice. A wooden trap door is hinged along one side and when closed is supported on the other side by a ledge. When the trap door is closed, the ledge exerts an upward force of 15 Newton on the trap door. The gravitational field strength is 10 Newtons per kg. What is the mass of the trap door here? Because this whole thing is balanced, here we have the pivot. This force is trying to produce a anti-clockwise turning effect and its moment arm will be 60. This weight of the door is uh, acting in the center. It's, it's, it's acting downward. So it's trying to produce a clockwise turning effect and its moment arm is 30 centimeter. So by applying the principle of the moments, um, the clockwise moment and the anti-clockwise moment, they are equal. I can very easily find out the value of this weight. Let me show you my work. And here we go. <clears throat> Clockwise moment is equals to anti-clockwise moment. So the clockwise moment is W multiply the moment arm. That's 30 centimeter equals to clockwise moment will be 15 Newton multiply 60 centimeter. So the moment arms on both the sides are we have, we have taken in the centimeter, centimeters. Normally we take them in Newtons, uh, sorry, in meters. But because we have taken both on the, in the centimeter of both the sides, so that does not make any difference. So now the W will be equal to 15 multiplied by 60 multiplied divided by 30. So 30 Newton will be the answer. That will be the weight. Now, uh, what will be the mass? 
So if if you know the weight of the door, you can find the mass of the door also. Weight W is equal to m g. Weight is thirty newton. G value is ten. M will be thirty divided by ten, and that will be three kg. So three kg is the answer. Three kg. So that looks like that the B is the choice. It looks like that the B is the right choice. Question number eight. B is the right choice. Which part of the graph shows the limit of proportionality for an elastic solid? So here we have an extension and load graph. The, the limit of proportionality is a point on the extension load graph. It's not a line, it's a point. Uh, after that point, the graph will be no more a straight line. It will become a curve. The extension and the load, they will be no more directly proportional to each other. So that point is clearly P. So I think C is the choice. <clears throat> Question number nine, C is the right choice. Five blocks have the same mass but different base areas. They all rest on a horizontal table. The graph is plotted to show the relationship between the pressure exerted on the table and the base area of the block. Which graph shows this relationship? You know, the pressure and the, and the area of the contact, they are inversely proportional to each other. Where if you will double the area, the pressure will become half. If you will half the area, the pressure will become double. They are inversely proportional to each other. And never, never forget this. If the relationship between two quantities is inversely proportional, then the graph between those quantities should be like this, D. It should be a decreasing curve. D, never forget this graph. The diagram shows the level X and Y in a liquid manometer with the gas tap open. What is the pressure of the gas supply? Look at here. This. So here we have the gas cylinder and this is the manometer. Here we have the atmosphere. The level of the mercury, uh, there are two limbs in the manometer, the limb which is on the air side. Here the level of the mercury is higher. It means that the gas pressure is more as compared to the atmospheric pressure. So we check what is the difference of the level in both the limbs. That's nine here and nine here. So total, total difference of the level in the mercury in both the limbs is 18 centimeter of the liquid. So it means that the, the gas its pressure is 18 centimeter of liquid more than the atmospheric pressure. 18 centimeter of liquid above the atmospheric pressure, I think D is the right choice. 18 centimeter of liquid above the atmospheric pressure. So D is the choice, question number 11. A parachutist has opened his parachute and is falling to earth at constant speed. What is the principal energy conver conversion taking place as he falls? Mark this word on your paper, highlight this word, constant speed. If something is moving at constant speed, Whatever energy it has, that will directly convert into heat. That's the rule of the physics. Whenever a body is moving at a constant speed and you have to describe the changes in the energy, whatever is the initial energy, uh, form of the energy, that will be directly converted into heat. You don't uh, name any intermediate energy. So the potential energy will be converted into the thermal energy because the body is falling downward, so it has gravitational potential energy and that's being converted into the thermal energy. So I think D is the right choice. Question number 12, D is the right choice, sir. A small energy generator supplies um, 432 million joules of electric energy in 24 hours. What is the average power output of the generator? And the answers are given in what 
you see the power is equal to energy divided by time energy should be taken in joules but the time must be taken in seconds the time given here is 24 hours if the time given here is 24 hours you can convert it into seconds simply in one hour there are 3600 seconds so 24 multiply 30 3600 seconds so simply simply multiply then you will get the time in the seconds i've done this on a paper let me show you my work here we go So power is equal to energy divided by time, four, three, two, zero, 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 divided by 24, divided by 3600. And the final answer will be 5,000 watt. Final answer will be 5,000 watt. That's question number 13. So let's check 5,000 watt is the answer. So I think A is the choice. I think A is the choice for question number 13. The liquid in, in a puddle evaporates and this causes its temperature to change. How does the temperature of the liquid change and why? You see, in a puddle, we have water, and that water is evaporating. When the water evaporates, the molecules who have the more kinetic energy, they leave from the surface of the liquid. So the remaining liquid has those molecules whose kinetic energy is low. So the average kinetic energy of that liquid, liquid will drop, and its temperature will drop. So you see, when the evaporation will happen, the liquid in the puddle, its temperature will decrease. The reason is that the more energetic molecules are leaving the liquid, have left the liquid. So I think B is the best given option. Question number 14, B is the best option. When a refrigerator is switched on for the first time, the air surrounding the ice box is cool. What happens to the density of this air and to its position inside the refrigerator? Papa. So you see, uh, Papa? when a refrigerator is switched on for the first time, the air surrounding the ice box is cool. What happens to the density of this air and to its position inside the refrigerator? You see the, uh, the density will increase because when you cool the air, the molecules will come close to each other. So the density will increase and the air will go down. It will sink to the bottom. So I think C is the right, the density will increase and it will sink to the bottom. So I think C is the right choice. Question number six, uh, 15, C is the right choice. Okay. An ice cube has a mass of 7.50 gram. The ice... Uh, the ice cube is at zero degrees centigrade. Heat from the surrounding reaches the ice cube at an average rate of 1.25 joules, uh, joules per second. How long does it take for all of the ice to melt? The specific latent heat of fusion of the ice is 333, 333 joules per gram. Okay. So first of all, I can calculate how much heat is required. The heat is equal to ML. And once you know the amount of heat, then you divide it with the rate of, uh, of the transfer of the heat. And then you will get the time. I have done this on a paper. So let's see what's I am. Energy is equal to M or heat is equal to M multiply L. M is 7.50 gram and the latent heat, specific latent heat of fusion is 333. So 2497.5 joules will be the answer. 
then I know the power. Power is equal to energy divided by time. The power is given 1.25 joules per second. And I want to calculate how much time it will take. I know the energy 2497.5. So I will make T the subject of the formula. So 2497.5 divided by 1.25. And my answer will be 1998. That's approximately 2000 seconds. Approximately 2000 seconds. So I think C is the choice. A bimetallic strip made uh, from brass and iron is used as the thermostat. When the strip is heated, the brass expands more than iron. Which shape will the strip become? This is a rule of thumb. Thumb rule, remember this thing. For example, uh, the upper layer is a brass and this is brass and the lower layer is iron. So brass and iron, okay. And he says the brass expands more. So when you will heat it, the both will be heated, the same amount of heat is given to them. So what will happen? The brass will expand more and the iron will expand less relative to each other. The brass will expand more and the iron will expand less. So the thing which expands more the, the biometallic strip will bend and it will bend in such a way that the thing which expands more, that will make the outer boundary of that curve. And the thing that expands less, that will make the inner inner side of that curve. So, so if this is the brass and this is the iron, you see, I put that like this. So brass expands more and the iron will expand less. So that should bend like this, the iron inside, the brass outside of the curve, because the brass is expanding more. When the brass is expanding more, it should be on the outer edge of that curve. So I think the B, I think the, where's the brass? Brass is up there, so it should be B. Question number 17, it should be B. A very tricky question. A very simple question, but you should, you know, now you don't have that article in physics matter, so that's why it might be a little tricky for you. Question number seventeen uh, B is the right one. Okay, let me show you this one. Which diagram shows an example of a longitudinal wave? A light traveling from a lamp to a screen, a spring pushed backwards and forwards, a spring pushed up and down, a water ripple caused by a dipper moving up and down. You see, uh, due to, uh, you know, uh, because uh, we are talking about longitudinal wave, in longitudinal wave there will be that wave in which we have the compressions and we have the rare fractions. So that's clearly the B. It has compressions, rare fractions, compressions, rare fractions, compressions, rare fractions. So that's the longitudinal wave. So question number 18, B is the right choice, sir. A student holds a sheet of paper uh, with letters on it facing a plane mirror. The letter on the paper are shown. What does the student see in the mirror? Remember, the image which is formed in a plane mirror that is virtual, that is upright, not inverted. So C and D cannot be the answers because they are not upright to the object. 
the image in the in the mirror plain mirror is upright so c and d cannot be the choice clearly they are out so then we have a and b another very important thing which in ha which happens in the in the you know the in the in, in the image or in the plane mirror that a lateral inversion takes place what's the meaning of lateral inversion that the left appears to be right and the right appears to be the left so that will be make us b choice some people might confuse with the a but i can tell you another very desi thing that look at this app this these these arms of app they are not facing go here the arms of the app they are facing go so that is not the choice a is not the choice sir b is the right option there we go a semi circular block is made from a plastic array of light passes through it at the angles shown the angle of incidence inside a dense medium or plastic is 28 degree the angle of refraction in the air is 45 degree two decimal uh, shown to to two decimal places what is the refractive index of the plastic n is equals to sin r divided by sin i remember this is snell's law you can write sin i by sin r you can write sin r by sin i that's equals to n the the thing which you should remember is that the, that angle we will put in the numerator which is in the rare medium so here the angle of refraction is in the rare medium so that angle should come upstairs so i will write sin 45 divided by sin 28 and that will give me the answer i have done this on the paper let me show you my work and here we go okay so n is equals to sin r divided by sin i sin 45 divided by sin 28 equals to so the final answer will be 1.51 simply put these values in the calculator you will get this answer and remember the calculator should should be set in degrees so 1.51 is the answer 1.51 c is the choice question number 20 c is the right choice sir convex lenses are used in cameras and as magnifying glasses which type of image are formed in the in the camera the image formed is real and in the magnifying the image formed is virtual so very simple simple textbook question image formed in the camera is always real because that is captured on the photographic film or the photo sensor and in the magnifying glass the image is virtual you can only see that image through through the lens so question number 21 b is the right choice hospital needs to sterilize medical equipment which electromagnetic waves could be used for sterilization we use uv light you might have gone to the salons and you might have seen there the hair salons you know and the barber shops they have a box in which we have a blue light and they put their tools in that box so that is that blue light is basically the ultraviolet it has ultraviolet light and uh, it, it it can kill germs so the uv light is used to sterilize sterilize means to kill the germs So question number twenty-two D is the right answer. So here we have the next question. A 
flash of lightning and uh, and the corresponding sound of the thunder are detected six seconds apart. A student calculates that the lightning struck about 1800 meter away. On which assumption is the calculation based? You see, uh, we have supposed if you divide this distance with the time, the speed will be 1800 meter divided by six seconds. So the speed will be 300 meter per second. So we have assumed that the speed of the sound is 300 meter per second. And uh, that another thing which we have assumed is that the light has reached us immediately, but the sound which is traveling at a very slow speed as compared to the light and the sound is traveling at 300 meter per second. So light has reached us uh, instantaneously, but the sound was traveling at only 300 meter per second. So let me show you light reaches us almost instantaneously, but the sound travels at 300 meter per second. This is the right choice. B, light travels 300 meter per second faster than the sound. That's wrong. Light travels 300 times faster than the sound. That's wrong. The sound of the thunder was emitted 60 seconds after the flash. That is also wrong. So A is the choice. Uh, which properties make materials suitable for use as a core in an electromagnet? You know, in the in the core of an, uh, we, for the electromagnet core, we use the soft uh, materials, soft magnetic materials, because they are easy to magnetize and they are easy to demagnetize. So I think D is the choice. <clears throat> Question number twenty-four: D is the right choice, sir. Okay, so here we go. Two metal spheres, P and Q, are mounted on insulating stands and are touching each other. They are uncharged. A positively charged metal sphere on an insulating handle is brought close to P but does not touch it. This induces charge on the P and Q. So because this is positively charged, so what will happen on the P, on this side, the electrons will accommodate, even from the Q, the electrons will come here. And this side of the P will become negative. And the, this side of the Q, that will become positive. The positively charged metal sphere is held in this position and sphere Q is moved to the left. So then you have moved it to the left. So, the, so this contact has broken. What are the signs? When you have separated them, what are the signs of the induced charges on P and Q and how do the sizes uh, of these charges compare? You see, so then you removed it, you have separated them. So P will be negative, the Q will be positive and the reason and the negative and the positive on the both of them, they will be equal to each other. So the P will be negative, the Q will be positive, and the size on the of the charge in both of them will be equal to each other. So clearly, the A is the choice. Question number 25, uh, A is the choice. Question number 25, A is the right choice, sir. A length of resistance wire is used as a resistor in a simple circuit. Four separate changes are made to the wire. Which change will not reduce the value of the resistance of the wire? You see, B, let me read first the B. Its cross-sectional area is increased. When you increase the cross-sectional area, the resistance will change. Its length is decreased. When the length will decrease, the resistance will definitely change. Its temperature is decreased. When you change the temperature, the resistance of a metal that will change. A choice. It is covered in an insulating sleeve. You see, if you put an insulator on the wire, 
it does not have any effect on the resistance. So A is the choice. We were looking for, for that change which will have no effect on the resistance. So A is the right choice. Question number 26, A is the right choice. A six volt supply is connected in series with an ammeter and a four ohm resistor. What is the reading on the ammeter? You see the EMF is given the resistance. There's only one single resistance. So a resistor, I can find out the resistance of, I can find out the current coming from the battery. The formula is very simple. The EMF divided by the total resistance. So let me show you my work. I've done this. So this is showing on your screen. Question number, we have the question number 27, I is equals to V by R. So we will have six volt divided by four ohm. So three by two, that's 1.5 ampere. So 1.5 ampere, 1.5 ampere. So 1.5 ampere, clearly the V is the choice. B is the choice. B is the right choice, sir. Try to understand this question. Sets of voltage current readings are obtained for different electrical components. Which set of reading is for a 100 ohm resistor? It's like a data. The X values and the Y values are given, okay? So suppose the V is the Y value and the current is the X value. So these points are like the coordinates of a graph, okay? So if V I take on the Y axis and the current I take on the X axis, then I draw a graph, then the slope of that graph will be equal to the resistance. So let me take the last points in last two points in every given option and find out the slope of this graph. So this will be my y, you know, remember in mathematics, you have learned this, that the gradient of the line or gradient of the line is equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, the change in the y divided by change in the x. So I will find the slope of each, each option. So here, this will be this y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, a very simple strategy. But there is a problem. Uh, the current which is given here is in not in ampere, it's in milliampere. So I have to, when I will find out the slope, I will convert it into amperes. How you convert this thing into amperes? For example, this x2 reading, that's 30 milliampere. So in amperes, I will divide it with 1000 and it will be 0 0.030 ampere. For example, this is 15 milliampere. When I will convert it into amperes, I will divide it with 1000 and it will be 0 0.015 ampere. So let me show you my work. I will find the slope of for all these four options and check which option will give me 500 ohm answer. So I've done this one up here. There we go. You remember that V divided by I is equals to resistance. So if you have drawn a graph by V taking on the uh, Y axis and I taking uh, taken uh, on the X axis, you see um, the graph, whatever the shape of the graph, I am trying to find out. I, I hope that that will be a straight line. And if you find the slope of that graph, that will be V2 minus V1 divided by uh, I2 minus I1, change in the voltage divided by change in the current, you will get the resistance. So I have done this uh, with the option A, option B, option C, option D. I have taken, for, for all the options, I've taken the last two points and apply the formula. Remember mathematics formula, slope is equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And I have found the slope. You can see that's showing on your, your, your 
the street. So I was looking for that option where the slope value will be 100 ohm. So clearly, the B has 100 ohm resistance. So I was looking for that option which shows 100 ohm resistance. So I think this is a little tricky question. So 100 ohm B is the option, sir. So that was question number 27. 100 ohm B is the option. So I think B is the right option. I applied the slow formula on these two points. Hopefully you have understood because this requires a knowledge of physics that the resistance is equal to B divided by I and then a little knowledge of the mathematics where you know you should know how to find the slope of a of a given graph okay the next question which is showing on your screen okay the student tests a student tests the circuit of a press button telephone with a lamp and a battery which single switch can be pressed to make the light lamp light? A single button which you close and the lamp will be switched on. So very simple. Here we have a battery. We have a battery here. This is connected with the battery. This side of the lamp is connected with the battery. So from the other end, if you go, 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 this. Uh, Okay, so this goes here and this goes nowhere. So, and from this side, these dots means that they are connected. When there is no dot, it means the wires are not connected with each other. Okay, so if you close, so if you close the uh, switch number five, look at here what will happen. Na, 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 na. If you close the switch number five, oh, the path of the current will be complete. So switch number five, that's the C option, sir. So C is the option. C is the right option. It's like that game where you have to find the path. The path or to get out. Which quantity is measured in kilowatt hours? Kilowatt hours is the unit of the electric energy which Vapta is using. Vapta is the energy, energy company which uh, manage this electric energy. So kilowatt hour is the energy, electric energy unit, and that is used to, uh, on this space, we, the, the electricity bills are prepared. So it's a unit of energy base. Kilowatt hour is the unit of the energy. Okay, so let's move to the next question. That's the question number. The metal case of an electric heater is us. The plug to the heater contains the 5 ampere fuel. There is a current of 4 ampere when the heater works normally. The cable to the heater becomes so warm that the live wire makes electrical contact with the case. What happens? You see, in this case, what will happen when the live current will go to the case and the casing is earth, so the current will start flowing to the earth. Now, from the main supply, the current is coming for that uh, heater that is taking 4 ampere. And then the current is also going to the ground through the earth wire. So from the main supply, the current which is e extracted, that will increase. So when that current will increase, the, the fuse which you have put in the live wire, its rating is 5 ampere. So the current when it will exceed 4 ampere and then because the current is going into the ground also, that will exceed the 5 amperes and your fuse will blow. 
and when the fuse will blow what will happen it will cut off the supply of the live current to that heater so the options are the current flows to the earth and the fuse is not affected that is wrong the fuse, uh, the fuse will be affected the fuse melts and switches off the circuit this, this is what will happen the metal case becomes live and dangerous that is also true and the metal case becomes very hot that is that might not be true so c is also right but you see eventually what is going to happen the fuse will blow so b is the right choice sir A long flexible wire is wrapped around two wooden pegs. A large current is passed in the direction shown. Which two pairs of lengths of wire attract each other? Remember, so here you have portions of wire which are parallel to each other. And remember in this, uh, this very important thing that when the wires, they are parallel to each other, when the conductors, they are parallel to each other, Remember this fact, if the direction of the current is same, same in the parallel wire, they will attract. They will attract if the current direction is same. If the direction of the current is opposite to each other in the parallel conductors, they will repel each other. So for example, J and K, if you look at the diagram, the J and K, they are parallel to each other, the direction of the current is same, same in them. So they will attract each other. For example, if you talk about K and K and L, they will repel each other. If you talk about L and M, L and M, you see they are parallel to each other and the direction of the current is same, same. So what will happen? They will attract each other. So if the direction of the current is same in the parallel conductors, they will attract mm -hmm. each other. And if the direction of the current is opposite in the parallel conductors, they will repel each other. So the first pair he's saying, uh, which two pairs of lengths of the wires attract each other? We are looking for the attraction. So J and K will be attracting each other and L and M will be attracting each other. The reason they are parallel to each other and the direction of the current is same in them. So J and K, they will attract. L and M, they will attract. So I think B is the choice. Check 32. Yes, B is the right choice. B is the right choice, sir. A famous question, the diagram shows the DC motor. Why is a split ring commutator used? This question can come also in the theory paper and you will have to write that why we use a split ring commutator in the DC motor. These, uh, the, the, split, the function of the split ring commutator is very simple. When the coil will become vertical, it will change the direction of the current in the coil. When the coil will become vertical, the split ring commutator will reverse the direction of the current which is going into the coil. To change the current direction in the coil as the coil pass the horizontal position, not the horizontal position, it's showing the horizontal position right now. And you can see the splits are not with the carbon brushes. To change the current direction in the coil as the coil passes the vertical position, yes, this is the answer. And sometimes this comes in the paper, theory paper, you have to write this at that. To change the current direction in the coil as the coil passes the vertical position, so no doubt the B is the right option. Without any doubt, I can tell you that B is the right answer. <clears throat> A magnet is pushed slowly into a coil. There is a current in the coil in the direction shown. The magnet is then pulled out quickly. Remember this one. It's pulled out quickly from the same end of the coil. What happens to the direction and the size of the current? Because now you have pulled it out on the same end. So the direction of the EMF or the current will be opposite to whatever we have here. And the its size will be larger because now you are moving quickly, you are moving faster. If you move the magnet faster, the current reduced will have a larger size. 
so the direction will be reversed and the size will be increased and i think the b is the right choice if you put pull the magnet out and quickly if you do it quickly then the current induced that will have a different direction opposite to whatever the direction shown here and its size will be larger 34b is the choice A cathode, uh, a cathode ray oscilloscope is connected to an AC generator. A wave is seen on the screen of the oscilloscope. The speed of rotation of the generator is doubled. What is the effect on the wave? You know, uh, when you increase, make the speed of the generator double, the 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 EMF of the current or EMF induced its voltage will increase. The EMF value will become also double. So the amplitude will become double of the wave. Amplitude will become double. If you double the speed of rotation of the generator, you know there will be more number of waves showing on the screen. If you have doubled it, then uh, for example, right now there are, I think, two waves showing on the screen, then there will be four waves showing on the screen. Then you will double the speed. So because the, when you double the speed, the, the, the frequency of the current which is induced by the generator, that will also become double. So in the same display, we will have four waves. So amplitude is represented. Amplitude means the voltage which is produced, that will also double. So the amplitude of the wave will double and the number of peaks on the screen, that will also, here we have only two peaks going. Then we will have how many? Four peaks. The number of peaks showing on the screen on the display of the CRO that will also become double. So a choice. 35A is the choice, sir. A capacitor C charges when it is connected to a DC power supply. Which arrow shows the direction of the conventional current? Which arrow shows the direction of the conventional current when the capacitor is charging? You see, when the capacitor is charging, this, this is the capacitor, this plate of the capacitor, the upper plate of the capacitor that is connected with the positive terminal of the battery. So the positive charge is coming on the, to this battery uh, this plate. So the direction of the conventional current will be here one. And from this lower plate of the capacitor that's connected with the negative terminal. So the from here, the charge is being extracted. And it's we're talking about the conventional current. So the direction will be three. Conventional current always flows from positive to negative. So from the battery, the positive charge is coming and negative charge is going. So it means the conventional current is represented by one and by three. So question number 36A is the right choice. It's a little tricky question. A is the right choice, sir. Because we are talking about conventional current. Okay, so let's... In one radioactive decay, radium gives rise to radon as shown. Radium is 88226 and, and radon is 86222. What particle is produced? You see the parent nucleus and the daughter nucleus, they both are given. So pay attention. Look at the parent nucleus. 88 is the proton number. And look at the daughter nucleus. 86 is the proton number. So how much is the decrease in the proton number 2? So the proton number has decreased by 2. Look at the mass number, the nucleon number. In the parent nucleus, the nucleon number is 226. And in the daughter nucleus, the proton number is uh, 222. So there is a decrease of 4. So in this decade, when the parent nucleus converted into daughter nucleus, 
the proton number was decreased by two and the nucleon number or the mass number was decreased by four. It means a particle is given out whose proton number is two and whose mass number or the nucleon number is four. And that is none other than alpha particle, famous alpha particles like the nucleus of a helium whose proton number is two and whose nucleon number is four. So then I think that an alpha particle has been given out. That's why we have this particular changes, which is showing in this. Uh, question number 37A is the choice. I hope you have understood that how we came to know that an alpha particle has been given out here. Which row is correct for Fion and for Fion? In the Fion, you know, uh, a, a, a nucleus is broken and smaller nuclei are produced. And Fion of a nucleus produces larger nuclei, produces larger nuclei, produces smaller nuclei. Yes, the Fion will produce smaller nuclei. So C or D is the choice. Fion that is taking place in sun, where the hydrogen and hydrogen that come close, fuse into each other, they make helium, a larger nucleus. That is happening on the sun. The fusion is happening on the sun. That is the source of the energy in the sun. So produces smaller nuclei, Fion is a energy source of a star. Yes, that is true. So I think C is the right choice. Question number 38, C is the right choice. When a sample of radioactive nuclei decays, the count rate falls from 1200 to 150 in three minutes. The total time taken for uh, the, the count rate to drop from 1200 to 50, 150, sorry, I said 1500, 150 uh, in three minutes. So what is the half-life of the radioactive nuclide? Okay, so I've done this on a paper. Let me show you my work and here we go. So um, it was 1,200, one half-life will go and it will become 600, another half-life will go and it will become 300, another half-life will go and it will become 150. So count these gaps, one, two, three. So three half-lives have passed. So one half-life will be the total time passes three minutes and we know that the three half-lives have gone. So one half-life will be of three divided by three, one minute. So I think the half-life of this radioactive uh, isotope is one minute. One minute is the answer. So one minute, B is the choice. Proton number is another name of atomic number. Nucleon number is another name for mass number. What are isotopes? Isotopes will have the same atomic number, but their nucleon number on the mass number, that will be different. Nuclei with the different proton numbers, no. The nuclei with different proton numbers, no. A and B is not the answer. Nuclei with, this, nuclei with the same proton number, and different nucleon numbers. That's the perfect definition of the isotopes. So I think C is the right choice. Question number 40, C is the right choice. So uh, my dear students, today, We have solved May, June, 2010, uh, Physics 505411 paper. That, that, that paper is an MCQ paper. And this belongs from the zone one. And uh, I hope that this uh, paper is clear to you. It was a relatively easy paper. And uh, I have tried my best to explain uh, through my description and through my paperwork. And I hope that you have understood this and this video has, will be helpful to you 
and it will improve the concept of physics to you. If this video is helpful to you, kindly don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also recommend these videos to your friends who are in O level and preparing for the Cambridge exam. And by watching these videos, uh, they can do the paper practice, they can improve their concepts. So don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to press the like buttons because they are like energy to me. So thank you very much. Have a good day and God bless you all.